10 basic cycling mistakes. Going out without spares or money. Your bike is ready, you feel fit, it's a beautiful day and you've headed out over a lovely route that takes you to places you've never been. As you reach the furthest point on the verge of heading back home, disaster strikes. You suffer a mechanical, a simple puncture, a loose pedal and you have no spares with you to fix the problem. What awaits you is an expensive taxi home or a long wait for someone to come and pick you up. Most bike problems can be fixed with a relatively small toolkit. Here at GCN we've got a roadside mechanical playlist which explains what you need to take with you and how to fix the majority of problems that you might experience whilst you're out. Going out without food or water. Hitting the wall or bonking is something that happens to every regular cyclist at some point or another. The feeling is like no other, and once you've done it once, it's something you don't want to repeat. It simply means running out of energy, making you feel lightheaded, weak and in some cases incapable of walking, let alone riding. Heading out on a decent ride without adequate food or drink is a common mistake for new cyclists. Our recommendation? Go out with more than you think you'll need, and also enough money to buy food or drink if you run out. Grabbing the brakes too hard unnecessarily. Pros make riding look easy. Cruising along at 50 k's per hour at incredibly close proximity to each other and seemingly hardly even needing to concentrate. If you're new to the bike yourself however, you'll find it hard to comprehend how they can be so smooth on these stiff, lightweight, twitchy road bikes. One of the first things you should learn is not to overreact to a hazard by grabbing the brakes. Doing this will often lead to a lack of control over the bike, potentially locking one or both of your wheels up and also be a major hazard to those around you if you're on a group ride. Of course, there are situations when you simply need to stop as quickly as you can, but in general a light feathering of the brake should suffice if you concentrate on making sure you're riding in the correct position within the group. Not having your saddle at the correct height. One of the biggest indications of a novice bike rider is their saddle height, too high or too low. It's a common mistake. Having your saddle at the correct height is important to allow you to be efficient at putting power through the pedals and it's not hard to do. Ride along and put your heel on the pedals. When the crank is at the bottom of the pedal stroke, your legs should be almost straight. This should put you in an efficient position while still allowing you to put your toes on the floor on either side of the bike. Putting your rain cape in the tumble dryer. You've done your ride in the pouring rain on mucky roads and upon returning home, proud that you've accomplished something in adverse weather conditions, you strip off, get in the shower and put your clothing in the wash. Not wanting to risk a wet chamois the following day where you've planned a further epic ride, you shove everything in the tumble dryer, rain cape included. What comes out at the end of the cycle is perhaps slightly more aerodynamic than you'd like and may as well be resigned to your kid's wardrobe. Being unable to unclip when you get to a junction or come to a stop. Whilst this can be very funny for any onlookers, it's potentially very painful. Having bought a new bike, you decide you need some dedicated cycling shoes and pedals to make you look like a proper cyclist. Everything is going fine, you're thinking about what you're doing and are having no problems at all. That's when the problems start. As you get more and more comfortable, you lose concentration. As you're gradually slowing down towards the junction, remember to unclip your foot in readiness. This will avoid any embarrassing moments when you finally come to a stop. I missed the beanbag. Braking once you're already in the corner. Just like motor racing or even general driving, the braking should be done before you get to a corner, not through it. Braking through the corner with your bike banked over is more likely to lock your wheels up, a situation that will make it very hard to stay rubber side down. Putting too much lube and the wrong lube on your chain. Nobody likes a squeaky chain and we all know what prevents it, right? Oil or lubricant. That said, you need to make sure that you use the correct type. Pouring castor motor oil through a funnel probably isn't going to do your dry train much good. And yes, we have seen somebody do that before. Specific bike lubricants might be slightly more expensive, but they serve a purpose, keeping everything running smoothly and not attracting too much dirt. Try and lubricate a clean chain too. Putting lube on top of lube on top of lube can leave you with the ultimate in novice marks, a fourth cat tat on your calf. Using the wrong gear or cadence. One thing which has continually developed on bikes is the number of gears. From the early days when to change your gear you had to reverse your wheel, to now where road bikes often have 22 gears and mountain bikes sometimes even more. Those gears are there for a reason, to allow you to ride as a comfortable cadence over all sorts of terrain. Use them to your advantage and don't get caught grinding at 40 RPM or spinning at 140. Also make sure that you learn which part of the lever moves the gears in the direction that you want. 
The last thing you want as your cadence slows is to accidentally shift into an even harder gear. Wearing pants or underwear under your shorts. Visible panty line or VPL isn't a great look at the best of times, let alone underneath your cycling shorts. The chamois inside cycling shorts is meant to be worn against your skin, not against your Calvin Kleins. Careful of those knees, man. I've got much life left in them as it is. It's happened to us all. Running out of glycogen and feeling weak, dizzy, and like you could eat an entire warehouse of chocolate. The problem, apart from feeling so terrible, is that we often overeat